Welcome you to the business meeting right, of the Borough Council for Tuesday, March 12, 2019. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Kenna. President Drabicki Bell. Here. Mr. Conti. Here. Dr. Carpenter. Present. Ms. Lalaba. Here. Mr. McCarthy. Here. Ms. Provenza. Here. Mr. Sachevich. Here. Mr. Alexander. Here. Mayor Cooper. Here. Mr. Pitch. Here. I am also here. Uh, there are no registered comments. Uh, please, if you're going to make an attempt to say anything this evening, please make sure your name is on the list. Council will now hear comments on agenda items at this time. Please approach the podium. Clearly state your name and address and limit your comments to three minutes. Okay. Mr. Kenna. Okay. So everybody got financial statements in your email. I also have them in hard copy in front of you. Um, well, before we get to that, everybody got their uh, meeting minutes for the last two months' meetings in your email. Marcia sent them out to everybody, and then if you requested them, they're hard copy in front of you. I know that there were some corrections made that I think Nancy requested, so I would ask for a motion to approve the meeting minutes from both February meetings. I'll make that motion to approve. The minutes from February 12th and February 26th. Motion by Dr. Carpenter. Is there a second by second. Mr. Conti? Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. So the next thing on the list is the bills payable. Uh, part of the financial reports that were sent out includes a list of the bills. We need a motion to pay the bills. I make a motion to pay the bills. Motion by Mr. Conti to pay the bills. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. McCarthy. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. The tax collector and special taxes reports. The uh, So for in the month of February, we did not receive any real estate taxes for the current year because the bills just went out. So we will be getting uh, those payments in for March. I've already seen them start coming in. So for the month of February, we received $2,360.20 in real estate taxes for the delinquent, delinquent real estate taxes. $30,326.87 for current year earned income taxes, $11,198.87 in local service taxes for the current year, and that is all. Okay, can I have a motion to accept the tax collector special taxes report? I'll make a motion to accept the tax collector special tax report. Motion second. by Mr. McCarthy, second by Mrs. Provenza. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. For the Treasurer's Report for February of 2019, we began the month in the general fund with $308,806.10. We received $75,534.75 in deposits for the general fund. We spent $101,407.58 for an ending balance of $282,933.27. Can I have a motion to accept the treasurer's report? I'll make a motion to accept treasurer's report. Motion second. by Mr. Conti, second by Mrs. Provenza. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Police Chief's report. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You received a 10 plan I complaint. Only five report with 12. Uh, eight were cleared. There were eight arrests made. Crime code summary position was five. Vehicle code summary position was four. Uh, borough code summary position was 29. And then there were 34 borough parking tickets written for the month of uh, February. Our revenue sources of magistrate's fines collected was $389.39. Our borough fines and fees collected was $291. Police reports purchased was $60. We had to uh, Amusement device fees $9,500. Municipal fines of $82.55. Old fines of fees collected $10,322.94. Um, 
The only other thing I might mention tonight is just kind of give you an idea. Um, made a traffic stop just a little bit earlier, about an hour ago. This gentleman asked me about it. Um, got the guy out because I knew he was just too much about the driver's license, but recognized him. Got the guy out, asked me how he drives on. Uh, you know, kind of had him down a bit, had a little bit of marijuana in his pocket. Uh, went ahead and uh, checked the backpack he had in his car. He had a couple of little bags of marijuana in the car. So we, we try hard to stay on top of that kind of stuff. And one of the ways that you can, you can uh, uh, find those kind of issues is on traffic stops. And uh, the police department was hard on uh, trying to keep that stuff out of the family. Just want to mention that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion to accept the police chief's report? I'll make a motion to accept the chief's police report. Motion by Mr. McCarthy. A second, please. Second. Second by Mrs. Provenza. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Fire chief's report. Uh, we had 15 fire calls for the month of uh, February. Um, everything's going good. Okay, thank you. Can I have a motion to accept the fire chief's report? I'll make a motion to accept the fire chief's report. Motion by Mr. Conti. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Loalbo? Yes. Are there any questions? I, I have one quick question. Um, of those 15 calls, uh, were any of them like major fires? No. No, no major fires. No. What, what is the bulk of the calls that you get? Uh, water problems, vehicle accident, uh, fire alarms, fire alarms down. Thank you. Okay, motion on the floor uh, by Mr. Conti to accept the fire chief's report, second by Mrs. Lalbo. Any other questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. EMS report. Good evening. For month of February, we had 11 ALS calls, 8 ALS calls, 5 patient refusals, 2 lift assists, 1 fire assist, 2 cancellations, and 3 false calls. Next month, uh, we were partnering up with, uh, we were participating with the Elliott County Police Department and Verona Police Department. We're doing a car seat safety check. That's going to be on Tuesday, April 23rd at the Riverview Children's Center parking lot. We're the car seat technicians on the end to check the proper installation. There is a fire service on the front door as well as the council has a fire as well. Our new ambulance will be delivered next Tuesday and it will be displayed at the car seat safety check as well. We're also planning on doing a another car seat safety check, hopefully in June or July, so they get a date to Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion to accept the EMS report? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Conti. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Suchovich. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. I have one more update. Um, I just want to let everybody know that uh, we brought up last month the phones. The phone company was here. They re-recorded everybody's greeting so everybody has their own mailbox everything is working the phones seem to be working much better so i want to give everybody an update the phones are fixed can i just ask a question about that uh, many months ago we got a paper from marcia mm -hmm. um, and there were different kind of um, extensions like mine was 163 and and so i did record a reading on that are those the same extensions yes. that they set yeah, up yeah there's a, yeah i yeah they're do the we, same do we think my greeting's still on there or should i redo it i think your greeting is fine i think the greeting that was re-recorded is to press you know six for this person press seven for this person that greeting because that greeting was wrong your greeting is still there that's the voicemail greeting that once they get into your yeah, box yes like right. as soon as they get the thing you can just punch it in and not wait right. for the person right yeah yeah thanks. so you're still good okay thanks. that's all i have thank you mayor uh real quick uh i, I meet with Bernard school uh pto um several times per year um one of the students um, Joey Brzezinski, he uh, brought up to 
um, some of the some of the mums that he would like to start a community garden and it was asked um, is there a place that we could do it at you know that the kids could do it uh, one of the places I suggested maybe right outside the window here it's accessible to water that would be totally up to the board uh, right here, Dan, right here yeah you know, to think about. Can someone we, do some, we had some that once before they did sunflowers. Yeah, they before they, before they, they got up, they were eating. <laughs> we would. I mean, we we can make it so right. That they, it's got a chance, but right. we can put a fence up or something. But right. there's a good uh, chance they won't they won't make it. Yeah, they're they're going to move forward. With, I mean, they're going to look into that because they would need uh, the cooperation of the parents also to come down and you know help the kids weed it and what have you. You know. And um, as far as watering goes, I mean, we have, you know, Tommy waters the flyers anyways. He could, you know, water that also. Yeah. Um, but they were they were actually looking at some empty lots. I And for that, I don't have no problems with make them useful. We've all talked about that before. You know, neighbors, you know, hey, let's go plant a garden in the, the, the lot next to you. It's empty. You know what I mean? It's, um, really, no one has done that. Um, but um, you know, let me know if you have any ideas on that. Do, do they want to grow flowers or vegetables? Vegetables. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, <laughs> Give Back Day is May third, and they, if anybody has any ideas, um, they've participated, you know, a couple of years now, and I'm sure uh, Sandy have, would have more information on that being up there. Uh, as far as give back day and uh, they're doing the box tops also and they wanted to know if uh, you know the best of you out here if they could um, uh, have people drop them off there um, you know the box tops they collect money St. Joe's does that out there. as right. well right so I don't have a problem with that no. does anybody have a problem with that no, no. okay no. Uh, so that's all on that um, Met with uh, the mayors. We, there's uh, Verona, Oakmont, Penn Hills, Plum, and Monroeville. The five mayors we meet once a month, and we opened it up, and we actually had uh, County Executive Rich Fitzgerald come, and a lot of questions were asked. One of the things I didn't know that the Parkway East is the fifth busiest um, roadway in the United States. I, I didn't realize that. And that's a nightmare up there. There, nobody really knows how to alleviate the traffic up there. That was a big discussion from like Penn Hills, Monroeville, Wilkins, Churchill, and so on and so forth. And we also talked about public transportation. Uh, there's no money available uh, for the trains or anything else that we've talked about. And uh, I also brought up re regionalization in several communities. Uh, on the east side there, the, um, the Turtle Creek Cog is actually um, doing a survey with Pitt, I believe, on the communities about that. And uh, across the river, I guess there's five or six communities that are also looking into that. So it's something that's going to come both for fire and police. And... Um, the chief here yeah um i just sworn in a new officer part-time officer and I, I can't remember his last name paul selinger yeah i think that's what it was selinger yeah um he's a new part-time officer i just sworn him in tonight so um, he's probably out walking the beat while the chief's here <laughs> and i would just like a very brief um exec exec session on uh personnel do we have to return? No. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Uh, just a few things. Um, mostly focusing uh, attention on uh, an email that, that was received, and I had sent everybody the pictures uh, that Mr. Warren had shared with me uh, regarding the steps between Vogels Lane and First Street. Uh, talk with Mark Stanton about it. Mark suggests that we remove those steps there, uh, just, just clean it out. So I talked with several residents on that area, First Street, the six, 600 block, and they all thought it was a good idea. So I don't know what council wants to do with this to, to take the steps out. I mean, you all saw the pictures, and... Um, you know, the residents are in favor of it. I don't know if we need to survey everybody on that block. 
what, how, how you, however you want to handle this? I think, that that's, I think that that's a council decision. Okay. That's our steps. You can do what you want. That's our steps. Okay. Yeah. How, so. What are they made out of and how much do we think it would cost to remove? Concrete and it's going to cost a, a decent amount of money. Yeah, okay. Concrete. I couldn't tell you how much. But it's going to cost a decent amount of money to repair them how they need to be. And I think right. they're, oh, right now, the they're a safety hazard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anybody can fall down them. It, so I think, I so think maybe, um, David also suggested the ones on, coming down to South Avenue. Yeah. Uh, people the are jumping the barrier Those from are school closed. street. Right. Yeah, but they're right. jumping the barriers and coming down anyhow. Yeah. Coming talk, down the steps. I talked to AJ about them. They should be removed. I was going to recommend blocking them off, but taking them out is the better option for sure. Because they're already blocked. Right. Well, the ones so, the ones on First Street are. They're they're accessible. The ones at the end of School Street that go down, that's gonna be that's gonna be ninety nine percent handwork and they're all concrete. So that's that's gonna be something very big. Okay. It, it can be done, but it, it's gonna take a lot to do it. Can you do it in house or is that something that you gotta bid out? Something like that we would probably have to bid out. The ones at the bottom at, at the end of first street, I think our guys can do that. Do we can we can we block them off? Until they get to that, get the ones to in First off. Street. I think yeah. it's too open. It's too wide open. I mean, I think people, they'll you, just come down the hill. Yeah, they will come down anyway. Yeah, right. They're going to come down. Right. Could, they, could you put could you put fencing along it so that they couldn't get? Yeah, but they're they're what eighty hundred feet long. We're probably better off just it's a lot. Them out. Take them By out. the time we put a fence up, just rip them out. Yeah, take them out. But uh, another oh, question though: if, if, if we put some kind of ones. barrier and sign that says "Do not use these steps," would it uh, help us in any way from a future liability standpoint? Well, sure. I mean, you can reduce your liability that way, but. I think the goal is to, to, to get people not to be, be up there. Oh, absolutely. The but I'm just saying in the meantime, while we're waiting for them to be <laughs> You can put no trespassing signs up. No trespassing is better than use at your own risk. Yeah, okay. So the street department will take that. No trespassing. Yeah, okay. Okay. So both sets are... Um, both the mar sets. March right. workshop, I've already... Uh, Mr. Forbeck uh, turned me on to Rob Dubas. Is that how you say his last name? From the uh, Keep Pennsylvania Beautiful. Uh, I've been in touch with him. He um, he is the lead for the Ill illegal uh, Thumb Free Pennsylvania program, and they do surveillance cameras on 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 loan type of situations. So he's going to be here for the March 26th meeting. So. If, um, Marcia can put him in for the registered comments. Yeah. Um, I've done some research through them, and there's there there are quite a few people uh, that I can contact. Uh, one of them I need to get in touch with. I guess Luke Maddox. Uh, there's a great American cleanup of Pennsylvania. It runs from March 1st to March 31st, from April 13th to May 6th. There's a program called Pick It Up Pennsylvania Days where um, if you register, you can get free vests, uh, gloves, bags, and so on and so forth, as well as possible free landfill space. So um, I need to hook up with Luke on that and see if um, we can get something rolling there because I looked at the application. It's not... It's not too congested, but like they want to know the name of the event and how many people you're anticipating and such stuff like that. Um, and Mr. Warren, <coughs> you had requested the chair committee's names. They're on the agenda as well, and there's one up here if you would care to get that. Thank you I, for that. I appreciate that. And. I need an exec session too on two uh, two personnel issues. We don't need to come back. So, Mr. Pitch. Yes, thank you. Uh, just a couple quick items. Um, I've been in talk with Penn Hills for the 2019 paving in Second Street. Um, they're on board. Uh, I'll be providing them the specs to review just to make sure that they're okay with that. And I'll be working with Craig to put together a um, 
a cost sharing agreement that outlines um, how much each borough or municipality will be responsible for. Uh, the DCD Greenways Trails and Recreation Program grant, uh, that is open again. Uh, we applied for that last year for a new pavilion at Cribs Field. Uh, we weren't selected last year, uh, but we were going to apply again for this uh, 2019 cycle. Same, same project, just hoping that we would get selected this year. The 2019 CITF grant uh, that was submitted, that is for some additional sanitary repairs required um, in the second street in Wildwood area. Um, the others I've been working with and talking with AJ about some drainage issues around town, some inlets that need possible repairs, and uh, some other items such as um, the leaky road on center, um, looking at getting to the source of where the water is coming from and, and getting some repairs done there. The other thing is I talked to Nancy and this has been going on for a few years. Um, in the VDAC, they, they were talking about a wayfinding uh, program to get some signs put up around the borough, uh, pointing out significant uh, items such as the parks, uh, some of the churches, schools possibly. Um, with that, we had put together an FOP, uh, got a quote um, from a, a local design company that would put together a, a master site plan as to where to locate the signs and also a, a master sign plan as to how to uh, design the signs. Um, I, talking to Nancy, she felt that there was money set aside in the budget a few years ago for that. Um, and if that's the case, uh, VDAC was going to be meeting and possibly asking the borough to move forward with that. Um, for the design services, we're in the, in the range of twenty to twenty-five thousand. Um, we would obviously put that out to a competitive bid, maybe get a little bit better price on that. And then for all the signs, um, without a design, it's hard to say right now um, the number of signs, the construction material of the signs. But you'd probably be looking in the range of about ten to fifteen thousand for the signs. Um, and one of the things they were talking about is they wouldn't want to move forward with the design if there wasn't some commitment to actually buying the signs as well. So I think that's something that Nancy will she'll touch on the topic a little bit more. Can I touch on that now while we're on the topic? Yeah, if you want to. I just wanted to verify. I remember, obviously not this year, but I think it was last year. Um, so it would have been back in, earlier in 2017 as that Luke made a presentation, and I think you guys approved to put 25000 in the budget for wayfinding. Um, and I wanted to verify or confirm that that's still there because we didn't spend it. All came, kinds of things happened during the year of 2018, you know, with changes and, the, you know, uh, town center kind of changing its focus and things like that. So it, it kind of got forgotten about, and now it's coming back up in, into consideration. So um, if, since we didn't spend it, I'm just thinking, is it still there? I have to double check and see if it's if it was 2018 i believe that it was 2018 that the money was in there mm -hmm. but i need to pull the budget up and and see 2018 was a a tough year because mm -hmm. of all the water and all the mm -hmm. expenses that mm -hmm. we incurred because of that so i need to make sure that that money is still available to us so and it's certainly not in the 2019 budget it was not earmarked as part of the revenues from 2019. Mm -hmm. so i need to check and see if that money is still available all right, yeah. so we can check yeah. with you maybe in, in two weeks when yeah. we meet again. Yeah. All right, thank you. It's something, and the, the wayfinding, just so everyone is aware of what it is, um, it it's, would be like the next step of the streetscape uh, to provide some signs nicer than just a, a aluminum stop sign um, that basically points out areas of the town, uh, directs you to Cribs Field, directs you to Riverfront, uh, directs you down to the borough building. Uh, they can be made of aluminum or wood. Uh, most of the time there's they're three-dimensional, um, they call them like an architectural sign. So they're, they're a nicer sign, and through the, the um, 
the design process because we have the, the light poles and everything an option is putting maybe banners on a couple of the poles as well so there's a lot of different factors that go into it and um i'll work with jerry uh to see what's available because that um there's different layers of the design so we could always get the, the master plan of where we should put the signs or whatnot and go from there aspen wall has some really nice signs yeah. That over, I mean, I was just there on Saturday, and they they really elaborated on theirs. Yeah, so it's not just uh, this wasn't out of the blue. It was, it was something that had been talked about. We did apply um, in 2017 for a grant. Unfortunately, we were unsuccessful at that time. Um, so it, it is a continuation of some of the improvements that have been done around town. Um, so that's just something that we'll be talking about moving forward. So it would be something then you would agree that would enhance the town even more to have some that like a, it you'd say it enhances Aspenwall's appearance. Aspenwall has a lot more the, uh, wayfinding than we do, so Yeah, yeah. But okay, thank you. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Solicitor. Thank you, Madam President. A few things to report on. Uh, immediately preceding this evening's regular meeting, we had uh, some public hearings. Um, at 6 o'clock, we had public hearings on two uh, subdivision applications. And we voted in, uh, we, council voted in those public hearings to approve those two subdivisions. That, that, uh, that really wasn't a voting meeting as I sat here and thought about it. So we probably should ratify those approvals at this regular voting meeting. It's the uh, D&D property, properties plan of lots uh, located at 915 Allegheny River Boulevard and the Murray uh, plan of lots located at 466 Wildwood Avenue slash 558 State Street. A motion will, will be in order to ratify those uh, approvals from the public hearing. Can I have a motion to ratify the approvals we made at the public hearing? I'll make a motion to ratify the uh, decisions made at the hearings. Mo motion by Dr. Carpenter Second. to ratify. Second by Mr. Conti. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. So thereafter at uh, 6.30 we held uh, public hearings on four properties that the borough is considering uh, to demolish uh, as public nuisances. And I'll, I'll do them individually. Mark Stanton provided testimony as to the various uh, safety issues and code violations with regard to each property. The first is property owned by Daniel and Michelle Voith, V-O-I-T-H at 473 Union Street, uh, lot and block 364-G-260, a motion to declare the property uh, a public nuisance and to authorize demolition. I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Conti. I will second. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. <clears throat> Next is property of Sharon Seaman, uh, S-E-A-M-A-N, located at 558 Church Street, lot and block 364-S-92, a motion to declare the property a public nuisance and to authorize demolition. I'll make a motion to uh, make the, the property at 558 Church Street a public nuisance and to advertise for demolition. Authorized. Authorized for demolition. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. McCarthy. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Next is property of Leah E. Kinsey, K-I-N-Z-E-Y, and Sarah Milliken, M-I-L-L-I-K-E-N. Uh, 849 Third Street, blot and block number 364-8-150, a motion to declare the property a public nuisance and to authorize demolition. I'll make a motion to uh, authorize for demolition the property at 849 Third Street. Is there a second? A second. Second by Mr. Conti. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Motion passed. Next is property owned by James and Carol with an E, Gatos or Gaidos, G A Y B O S, uh, 515 East Railroad Avenue, uh, lot and block 364, P 312. A motion to declare the property a public nuisance and to authorize demolition. I'll make a motion to uh, authorize for demolition the property at 515 East Railroad Avenue. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. McCarthy. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. So next, um, there's been a lot of volunteerism uh, in the borough recently, and it was suggested that I create a volunteer labor form that uh, volunteers can uh, sign waiving any liability for the borough and I would just uh, ask that the borough adopt uh, the volunteer waiver form that I prepared and Dr. Carpenter has helped me uh, substantially with regard to that waiver as well. And I have a motion to accept the volunteer waiver form prepared by our solicitor. I'll make that motion. Motion by Dr. Carpenter. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by who? Sylvia. Mrs. Provenza, are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Thank uh, you for doing that. Nancy has some items on her report and uh, continue to work with uh, Mark on a number of issues uh, along with uh, Manager Ken. And that's all I have to report. Thank Sorry you. for the lengthy report. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, Mr. McCarthy. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Conte. Thank you. Uh, I got a phone call the other day from Vince Floto, or the garbage cans that they ordered came in, and AJ went and picked them up. They're in the garage. They will be, we, we have to look and see where the best place to put them is, and they'll do whatever they have to do to make sure that they're attached to something so they won't be dumped over. Uh, I talked with AJ about the water line over here. They're, they're ready to go on that. Um, we, I talked with uh, Mark Stan about no dumping signs because we're having <coughs> some issues with a couple places. People were dumping, so we ordered 10 no dumping signs, and um, once they come in, we're going to put them put them where they deem it's deemed necessary. Uh, that that's probably going to take at least a week, 10 days before the signs come in. And then where the new street light is going in, uh, the contractor was here. Uh, Monday and yesterday and he had to remove one of the trees that was, <laughs> was put in so we had him take it out as carefully as possible he put it in our dump truck and AJ took it down to West Railroad Avenue and replanted it for now until hopefully it'll, it takes and if it does then we'll have to decide where where we want to, if we want to move it where we want to move it to and that's pretty much all I got. Well, the road department, road department is cold patching right now. And that's pretty much all I have. Dom, can I ask, uh, those no dumping signs, can we wait until those places are cleaned up before we put the signs up? Yeah, there's a couple that are already cleaned up that uh, they cleaned up. But um, yeah, we, can, we won't put them in until the area is cleaned up. The ones that are cleaned up, we'll have them put them in right away. But the other ones, we'll clear out and then we put the signs in. And where's the new street light? In uh, Wildwood oh, Beach. Oh, traffic light. Oh, the red the light. The new red, the red light. light. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, is that good? Okay. Um, yeah. Question, Dom. Um, I noticed the street sweeper is uh, out and active today. Yes. Okay. That's very cool. Yes. Thank they had to do a little bit of work on it, but yeah. it's out. Okay. That's great. Thank you. That's all I have. Dr. Carpenter? Uh, yes. Thanks. Um, not too much going on right now. Uh, we're working on um, the uh, amending the ordinance that says that there's no alcohol in the parks. Uh, Craig, remind me, I think we're going to do a resolution or are we going to redo the ordinance, do something to, to make it so that when there is a special occasions permit obtained, that then we would ask people to then get a permit from the borough uh, that they would pay, say, $25 for for that special occasion. Do I have that? Right. What, what, what we're considering, <coughs> right now there's a blanket prohibition right. in one of our current ordinances uh, against having any alcohol. 
in the public parks. Uh, so we're going to amend that ordinance to remove that blanket prohibition uh, and uh, replace it with a provision that says that it, you know pub, that alcohol in the park public parks may be uh, considered uh, upon uh, the granting of a permit for whatever reason, whether it's a special events permit uh, or a permit to just uh, allow uh, alcohol to be given away at certain events within the discretion of council. Um, and we'll work on the language and, it'll, and, and you will be allowed to revise that language at any time, the permitting fees by way of a resolution so that you don't have to um, you know, advertise every time you want to, to change the permit fees or things like that. Okay, um, thank you. You're welcome. Um, also, uh, was, uh, I was asked about, as the spring and summer is upon us, uh, there are a few establishments, eating establishments, that would like to, you know, have their tables uh, outside. And well, I looked in Eco360, I haven't been able to find it yet, but um, Dave, David remembers uh, back in the 90s passing an ordinance that says you can only take up three feet of space on the sidewalk. And um, as things are right now, um, you can't have alcohol outside of a restaurant. So that would also require some work. Uh, so we're working on finding that ordinance. Yeah, I think Hopefully. that ordinance was during my time because it was my it, time too. It was my yeah, time too. Oh, so it's yeah. been or it's more recent yeah. than yeah. the 90s. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, well, it was in the 90s. I, I looked, I searched under sidewalks. I, I didn't know what else to search under, but we'll find it. And then, um, so we'll consider that at the next ordinance meeting, which will be on May, March 25th at 3 o'clock. Uh, and then I have here, yeah, I'd like to have an exact session. The personnel, no need to come back. And uh, just to piggyback off your spring and summer establishments needing at, um, Mechanics Coffee has a an event planner over there, and um, she was asking me what they would like to do is maybe um, they they want to get more involved with the community. So maybe with the rec board and that they can. Um, they, she was asking me about maybe having a movie in the park. They wanted to do the movie in the park, but they were wondering about the screen and the projector and stuff. And then they would have coffee samplings and stuff like that for, for the people. So um, something to think about. But I'll come to the rec board meeting. We can talk about it. Sure. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McCarthy. These contracts have been signed and then settled. So good. good. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Suchovich? Nothing okay. at this time. All right. Mrs. Loalba. Pavilion lights. Uh, the rec board has passed. If they could have control of the lights when it comes to changing the color of the lights. If the controls, apparently, it's kind of simple to do, but um, if they could be left maybe in the police station rather than have the street crew do it, um, they would like to have control of changing the colors of the lights, if that's possible. I, with, I don't have a problem with I'll that. I'll talk with AJ, but I don't think it'll be a problem. It, would, it's simple to change, but there's like 12 different controls because there's so many different strings of lights. That's the problem. But I don't think AJ <laughs> will have a problem giving that up. That, 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 that would require their approval because that, that yeah, would be considered bargaining unit work. Okay. So they would have to give that up, okay. basically. I don't think that'll be an issue. Okay, well then you'll get back to us on one. Yeah, Thanks. yeah. I'll talk to him tomorrow morning. Okay. And you'll have the controls tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> that handy place if they could leave them like either in the office or in the police office, so they could come in, you know, okay. at a time where they, you know, yeah. they could be put somewhere where they would be accessible to. Okay. And I think they suggested the police department, then that way, no matter what time of the day, they could come down and get it. Yeah, that's fine. Thank yeah, they'll just call the officer and he'll come down. Yeah, with the thank key. you. So yeah, check with AJ and get that approval. Um, Dom already touched on the trash cans, they're in, so I don't need to go over that. I did give everybody a uh, printout of the Bison Gooseneck Playground basketball hoop that Matt has suggested. This is for uh, Riverbank Park, the ones the hoops and poles down there are really bad. 
uh, they need to be replaced. So Matt came up with this. So I'd like, it was recommended also by the, they, the rec board recommended as well. So I'd like to go forward uh, with the motion that the borough purchases uh, two of these. Okay, mo motion made by Mrs. Loalbo to purchase the hoops that we have the information on. Is I'll, there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Conti. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion passed. Thank you. And while we're still on the basketball subject, I have several kids that have been asking when are the <clears throat> courts going to be open, Riverbank and at Cribs. I guess they've still been locked. And I guess, you know, there's been some nicer days when the kids really want to get outside, put down their computers or whatever they're looking at and get outside and play and shoot some hoops and things Crib, like that. Cribs so. basketball court can be open now. Uh, we just leave the gate closed going into the park for now because of the rain because all the rain we had it's still mushy would you want the parks open if it's like like thursday's supposed to be 65. if it dries up yeah yeah so we'll we'll basically it's supposed to rain it's supposed to rain done all the time yeah. chief yeah, i know yeah. it's going to be nice basketball. though i'm sorry i know the basketball courts at the river uh, bank were open today well, they have to i got to lock them up thank you yeah, the kids want to be Okay. Yeah, those the ones at Cribs, they can be opened up now, okay. if okay. you would. Yeah, I appreciate it. The kids would like that, too. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Provenza. Yes, thank you. Uh, Dom, I'd like you to thank the uh, streets crew for doing a wonderful job this winter, as they always do, keeping the roads clean and keeping us safe. I will do that. We, we all appreciate that. Please thank them. Um, Newsletters on to print, so hopefully it'll be out much earlier than it was last time. Um, also, borough taxes. I know we all got our borough taxes. Um, they sent a lady down to collect the end of the month. So it'll be the end of April. And I think that's a very nice service to all of us. It would be very nice to uh, be supportive of this. This is a, a help to everybody rather than trying to remember to mail it. So. Um, I will remind again next month so that we don't forget the date, but it will be the end of April then, next month. Uh, Jerry, also, thank you for handling the reservations for Seven Springs for all of us. I appreciate it, yep. and I know everybody else does. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Also, uh, I represented Verona at the uh, Allegheny League of Municipalities along with Nancy, and uh, it was a wonderful turnout. It was a full house. Um, they now have 65 communities of which we are one of them that are participants in this and this year they actually had <coughs> excuse me uh, three authorities that have come in to the Allegheny League of Municipalities it was um, Hampton Shaler they went together on it also Harrison Alcasan went with them also and they got um, Ross and Westview went together and their EMS is also part of this, which they've never done this before. So that was um, a very good thing. And uh, for those of you that don't know what Allegheny League of Municipalities is, uh, these are communities that have shown fiscal management, uh, professional development, and uh, proactive community development. That was just a few of the things. and. Um, I felt very honored to be there to represent our town and uh, at this time I would like to present a citation to the borough uh, in recognition of being down there. <coughs> this is a citation that we received and uh, Rich Gerald was there also and a few other dignitaries. It was a wonderful afternoon. So I would like to present this to our borough manager, Mr. Kenna. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sylvia, did they say how many years we've been doing this? Because I, I started that back in, I, I don't even remember when. I know Leo did it and you've done it for two years. Yes, it started in 2012. And I'm sorry, okay. I didn't mean to say that and I forgot. 
But yes, it started in 2000. So this is our seventh year. Yes. Nice. The and banner. it is really growing. It was a Good. wonderful, Good. wonderful Good presentation. You know, the Banner community started in 2012. Yes. They've been right. doing it for seven years. I think we've been in it for Maybe like five, five years. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Sylvia's done it for two. Yeah, Leo did, Leo did, it, did for it for two. two. And I started and it. Yeah, yeah. For, so that's five. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Do you have anything else? Oh no, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm done. Thank All right. you. Um, <clears throat> Council of Governments. I was unable to attend, uh, but Mr. Uh, McCarthy attended for me last month, so he has some information there, and I would like him to make everybody okay. available of it. Well, Mr. Uh, Pitch took care of it, most of it, but they are having electronics uh, return for televisions and things May 11th up at the mills. There's a cost involved, but you can get rid of electronics and stuff, and that's uh, May 11th. Uh, also, the equipment is in for the uh, councils of governments to use. Oh, okay. Good. Okay, but there's going to be a two or three, <clears throat> excuse me, two or three day uh, training seminar in April. They're going to let everybody know when okay. and how many. They haven't decided like how they're going to um, get this to each of the areas and how much how much time each one will have to use it. But they're going to have paperwork for that. But they're going to have at least one, if not all the crews, the whole crew there for two or three days. Okay. Okay. And, and they'll, they'll let us know. They're going to let you know. Uh, all right. But th they said they planned on trying to do it in April, early part of April. Okay. Perfect. Thank okay. you. That's it. Uh, Mr. Suchovich, anything on TCC? No, nothing. Okay. Um, council will now hear comments from the public on public related items. <clears throat> Please approach the podium, clearly state your name and address, and limit your comments to three minutes. Good evening. Dave Matlin, 722 Bruno. Um, regarding the steps at um, Vogel's and School Street, um, I was just wondering if council might consider um, looking at it a little more closely. Um, uh, as far as traffic usage and, and um, how many people use it other than just maybe the immediate residents. Um, I know that I feel like one of our best assets here is that the whole town is very walkable. Um, I just know from taking a bus every day that the School Street one, before it was blocked off, was used pretty frequently by, it seemed like people going from the business district up to School Street and back. It's a, it seems like a really convenient way to, to walk down to the, you know, get a cup of coffee, go to the grocery store, um, go to any of the businesses. I think that's something we can promote better. Um, I do understand that the cost to repair may be a lot, um, the cost to maintain may be a lot. Um, there may be grants available for that sort of thing. Um, it really could be something that we, uh, that we could promote and take pride in if they were, you know, brought up to, to a state of good repair. Um, so I would just ask that, um, you know, that a, a more careful look at that be done before making a knee-jerk reaction. Maybe get an engineer's estimate, maybe look at grants. Um, and I know like the city of Pittsburgh, they're, they're taking a lot of their uh, steps that are in really, really bad shape. And um, they're kind of renewing them and, and people are taking more pride in them. So I think, I know that crime may be an issue if they're not well lit and things like that. Um, I would think that if they're in good shape um, and, and kept up with maintenance that um, it would attract less of the riffraff and more of the people that are using it legitimately. So, sure. thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm Mr. Warren from uh, 562 Vogels Lane. I just want to say thank you. I know Council in the last few weeks has considered my um, my public statements and also my email for some of the things that I had asked to be addressed. And I know from uh, a couple of phone calls and emails and then from conversations today, um, you've taken them seriously, so I, I very much appreciate that. Um, and to the remarks for the steps from earlier, um, I would also ask that you consider repair versus demolition on them. I know just seeing that the, you know, one of the reasons I moved here um, was the walkability. I've used the steps. I, I believe they're in disrepair, but I'm not a professional. Um, 
but I think if you go beyond the immediate houses where they are, I don't think people go up and down from those immediate homes, but if you kind of take a look at a greater view of surveying the use of the steps. Sure. Uh, and part of my remarks were the current use of them, but I don't think demolition is necessarily the answer, so I just ask that you maybe explore that before you mark them off. Um, I don't know if there are any repercussions to having a loss of steps for grants, if we're, I don't know how that works. I don't know if we're counting towards the steps in the county, or if there's any grants we've received for being walkable or shoppable or whatever it is. Um, but I do ask that you consider repair uh, versus removal. Um, and also with the wayfinding sign system, I was glad to hear that for our community. Um, I actually lived in Aspinall for 11 years, and that was one of my prides I actually started and helped with the wayfinding system. Uh, public um, remarks for those, the planning, the sign systems that were purchased, and all for bid. So if there's any way I can help as a resident and you'd like to have a public comment to that, um, I'd very much like to help out if that's possible. Um, one of the things I did want to ask about, because I've not lived here my whole life, it's only been a couple months, um, the intersection of uh, Wildwood and Second, where there's like almost like a yellow island, I don't know if that's something you could consider for wayfinding. I think that's one of the entry points in the community I'd like to see brought up to par. Um, I know it's been hit, it looks like, in recent years, and then the paint and weeds. I think those are all things that could be easily fixed, but if that would be a point of entry into the community, I'd, I'd appreciate if you guys would consider that for wayfinding, too. David, is that Penn Hills? Yes, yes. Penn Hills, yeah. That island there is? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So how traditionally has the borough asked for them to repair and bring that up to speed? To we, we actually, we've actually in the past, before this board was on, um, maintained that. Um, we get a lot of accidents in the winter time. People coming down Wildwood or trying to, or run the road trying to make the right and then plow into it. Um, but uh, yeah, we have uh, painted that in the past, but um, I, I think it's something we should look into with Penn Hills. I think one year when we were on, we asked Penn Hills if we could paint it, and I think we painted it ourselves right. one year. Is that something that the council would consider investment for the paint for the labor of that? Just because I thought it was ours, I wasn't quite sure where the border lay, but I think visually optics, I don't think people see the border, they just see what it is. When we get the OVR students this summer, they could do that. Yeah. Yeah. That and could be something that they, they'd be able to do. Let me check with Penn Hills because I think they might actually be considering painting it this summer. Yeah. While, I believe while that you're talking to them about that, actually. <clears throat> while you're checking with Penn Hills, could you check with them about the business there on the corner? They have been citing them. In uh, Craig, let's, let's, some, let's, something let's, terrible is going to happen there because you cannot see. I was just going to make one more remark. Let's hear, let Mr. Warren get through. Yeah. Yeah. So to that remark, that would be. Uh, the use of a sign system to, to be mounted there, you know, there's a line of sight. I was going to mention too, I think it's the same sidewalk to the post office box you're talking about. Sidewalks taken over by a vehicle you can't see, then, you know, I, I wouldn't want the sign to obstruct it, but I think there's, it's, it's a good piece of real estate to use for signage. Um, and one more remark I just want to share with uh, the use of alcohol uh, for the park ordinances that you're going to consider. I don't know if it's something you could look to that it would be resident only, so people from outside the community wouldn't host a party for alcohol, right? I don't know what the intent was, but I just wanted to to make that remark. The community I came from, if you want to have a birthday party for your kids, you would then, as a resident, be able to apply for $25 special use mm -hmm. versus people making this a destination. So it's more of a community feel. Yeah. People that don't live here or couldn't walk to it wouldn't be able to just rent it as a cheap place versus going somewhere else. Yeah, that's, um, that's a good idea. I just think it was some some insight into how it was used that I think worked well where I, where I come from. We so were thinking sure. initially only about larger events um, that would be hosted by food trucks, the food chamber food. with the food trucks, with the um, rec board, things like that. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. It's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Don Moore, 66 Third Avenue. I just want to inform the council um, that the Lenovo laptop computer that um, was bought when they installed the uh, camera here is uh, the operating system on that laptop, I think, is corrupt, corrupted. Because uh, this happened a couple months ago uh, when the History Society was going to use it with a guest speaker. Uh, we went to set up the computer and uh, it wouldn't boot up. So uh, we wasted about a half hour and I ended up going home and getting my computer and bringing it down. And, you know, by the time we got the thing working, it was about an hour late. 
So I'm, I'm sort of requesting or putting in a request uh, to the council to maybe uh, fix that computer because it is for the use of uh, council and anyone else who uses this hall. And uh, there may be a time when council needs it and it's going to be broken and uh, that might be an embarrassment to, to everyone. Who's in, who's in uh, who, ha who has the computer right now? It's back, it's back in the back. It's back here? Yeah. Okay. Do you know when people but are the operating system is corrupted. Uh, we just well, yeah, <laughs> we tried to get it to boot up for about 45 minutes, I think, to get you. It just wouldn't boot up. So okay. I think it's a simple fix. It probably just has to be reinstalled, hard to reinstall the operating system. but. You might want to look into that so that you know we can use it maybe next time. We have a guest speaker coming in at the next for a, a society meeting, and uh, I think they may need a computer. I'll probably have to bring mine down for this time, but uh, maybe on the next time we need it, uh, it could be fixed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Okay. Can I? Hi, Perry Del Rosso. Um, Mike DeVittorio from the Trib is here tonight with me, and he just had a couple questions. Um, so I want to ask Sylvia, um, you spoke about um, Corona Borough taxes. Are you having someone come in and helping out with that? No, they collect the taxes. When you say we they, you know, Keystone Collection Groups come from in Keystone, here one day. They come. The last okay. day of the last day of discount, Keystone Collection Group sets up here to collect. Okay, what date is that? Do we know? Uh, April thirtieth. Right here, April thirtieth. Right, right, Sylvia. It's the last. You day. know what? I'm not sure. I don't want to say. I'll it. let you know. It's on I, the back of the bill. I'll usually, it's on the last day that they're due. It's the last. That would be. It's okay. the last day of pay. It's last day of the discount. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm pretty sure. And they're hardly ever busy, so it's really easy right. to April come in here and be correct. <laughs> okay. It's they important that we get that word out to use it because every year they get concerned that it's worth their time. That's right. right. And we had to cut down to one day. Usually they come in both days, the last day of face as well, but we had one person use it that day. Okay. So I could we couldn't justify having Keystone sit here all day for one person. So, so we'll be here on the last day of discount. April, April 30th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. In the borough building. Right here. Right here. Right here. They sit right right there. Okay. And they'll stamp your receipt so you can use it for your property tax rebate. Right. Okay. Um, once the volunteer waiver or the form is done, we should stick it up on the website too. That's something I'd like to do. Good idea. Um, the, Jamie had made the announcement about the car seat event. That'll be held at RCC. Here, you want the paper? Yes, so that's, that's something you want. Where do I figure out which one it is, Gary? Oh, one with the car. It's one with the car seat on it. Yeah, I know. It's just a yeah. car. Gary. Yeah. Everybody wants to get rid of it. Okay. <laughs> um, wait, one more thing, too. The um, police contract. Can we talk about that maybe with Mike as well after the meeting? Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for me? Oh, okay. last thing too about the school district. Um, the microphone is The Burr Elementary was ranked seventh on Niche as um, one of the top schools in Pittsburgh, um, and, and it was it was pretty well recognized. Um, you know, Dr. Menino was actually pretty thrilled about it. The ratio of Burr Elementary um, teacher to student ratio is one to nine. There's only 183 kids in that school. Um, Please tell your friends that want have to bring them here with families because the school district is is, is absolutely wonderful. And um, I don't know if you've heard the news, but Mrs. Plans is actually retiring. Yes. So uh, I've been looking for another principal up there. She's an asset to that school. So. And they're having a school board meeting next week at Verner Elementary. Yes. So, so maybe all the residents of Verona and Council can go. And um, just to give you kind of the heads up, they're working. Um, if we're in the middle of budget season right now, there's um, a little bit of a deficit they're looking at going into this year. They're trying to work that out. Um, things. And so I encourage everyone to attend the meetings because this will affect mm -hmm. everyone. If you're yes. Yes, it will. Thank you. Okay. And the budget's online too. If you go under um, business office. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sandy, what was the date on the meeting at Burner? Uh, next Monday, uh, the 18th. Mm -hmm. What time? Seven, I believe. Thank you. 
Yeah. I have one more question, I guess, as a follow-up, because I think I mistakenly emailed you. If, are you with the TRIB? You're with the TRIB. You are on public relations for the council that here? Yes. And you're a council in Oakmont? I'm on Oakmont Borough Council. Borough Council, okay. Yes. I just wanted, because I wasn't sure if it was, if you were the reporter or if you were the reporter, so I just wanted clarity, because I emailed you asking my council, but you're not our council. No, 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 no. I was confused. No, no, no worries. Thank you. Okay. Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? <coughs> to exec, I would to make a motion. To exec. I'll motion to adjourn to exact session. We motion by Mr. Return. Conti. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mrs. Provenza. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. aye.